And good evening, everyone. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, America's new path to war. So the United States is lowering the threshold for American military involvement in a possible war with North Korea. In the face of mounting threats from the young, untested dictator of the country, Kim Jong-un, the U.S. is getting ready to fight back. Now, while the nearly 30,000 American troops in South Korea are already obligated to defend that country in the event of an all-out war, under the new plan, these troops could fight in direct response just to provocations from North Korea. It could be a significant difference from the way things are right now. Pentagon Chris, uh, correspondent Chris Lawrence is out front tonight. And Chris, let me start off by asking you that question. What does this new agreement actually mean for American troops and the threshold where they would be in conflict? Aaron, it basically puts it down on paper and formalizes the agreement that the U.S. is going to be a part of this defense right from the get-go. Not just all-out war, but even these small-scale attacks. So what are we talking about? Well, North Korea was accused of sinking, torpedoing a South Korean ship. So one of the, re one of the provocations could be North Korean ships going into these disputed waters, which they have in the past. Also, uh, air, North Korean jets flying into South Korean airspace. Uh, they came close to violating the DMZ just last year. South Korea had to scramble four fighter jets in response. And finally, shelling these border islands like they did a couple years ago, that also would very likely invite a response. Some of the other reasons are to step up the cooperation between U.S. and South Korean troops, as well as act as a deterrent. For example, just recently, Kim Jong-un threatened to wipe out entire South Korean military units on some of those other border islands. Aaron? Now, Chris, um, a lot of people watching will say, okay, so does this open America up to more serious conflict, to war? It actually opens the U.S. up to smaller conflicts, but those smaller conflicts are more likely to happen and they happen more frequently. So it's opening the range of things mm. that the U.S. might be involved in right from the get-go. And even though South Korea may still respond first to a North Korean provocation, if North Korea then retaliates, you start to get this escalation that the U.S. could be very much involved in. That's right. Small things can become big things pretty quickly. Chris Lawrence, thank you. And I want to bring in Colonel Cedric Layton now and Gordon Chang, author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Gordon, let me start with you. So this, this agreement, you just heard Chris Lawrence reporting what it would mean. So the things that North Korea seems to do pretty regularly could now mean American troops uh, are, are fighting over. You say this is dangerous. Well, it's dangerous in one sense. You know, we can always get involved, even in the small provocations. I'm concerned, though, that we have just spent two and a half years negotiating with the South Koreans. We don't look resolute. We look legalistic. And that's a problem, because I can see General Thurman saying to President Park, well, we're not going to get involved in this incident because it doesn't fall under paragraph one of Roman numeral three. I think it would have been much better for President mm -hmm. Obama to stare into a camera and say, the United States will respond to attacks on South Korea with the immediate use of force. We talked like that during the Cold War, and we kept the peace. We don't talk like that anymore. And mm. because of that, deterrence is breaking down in Asia. And that's why we've had all of these problems with North Korea recently. So you think deterrence is failing? It is certainly failing, because the Chinese and the North Koreans think that they can push us out of Asia. And the Chinese have been engaging in mm. some very provocative tactics recently, because they think that they can push us around. So, Colonel Layton, North Korea is an army of 1.2 million people, 120,000 special operations forces, which is kind of a stunning number. Uh, we don't know exactly how many nukes, and of course, uh, uh, up to 800 medium and short-range ballistic missiles, uh, just to give everyone a sense of the military power there. And of course, over the past six months, there have been a lot of tests and provocations. So is this deal a sign that the United States sees war as a serious possibility? I think so, Erin. I think it's one of those moments where the United States is looking at burden sharing with its allies. So it's, a, although it may be legalistic, as Gordon mentioned, these are the kinds of agreements that the Obama administration really wants to bring to the forefront with its allies. So in the case of the Korean situation, uh, war is a, an extreme likely possibility because, extremely likely possibility because what you have here is a, this hair trigger response that that is being created not only by the fact that we have troops there, but also by the fact that we have this agreement in place now. And, and what, Colonel, does that war look like? Because a lot of Americans are, are saying, all right, 
I'm worried about North Korea. North Korea is an issue, but I've been hearing a lot about it over the years, and I don't know that I am quite aware or quite prepared for what you just said, that war is a real possibility. Well, the war may not be a full-blown war in the sense of a nuclear confrontation or even a major theater war with uh, massive armies fighting each other across the Korean Peninsula, as was the case in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. uh, but what will happen probably is you'll have responses to some very specific actions. So if an island is shelled, a South Korean island is shelled, there'll be a response that will be commensurate with that action. There will also be an action probably to get rid of uh, the North Korean command and control elements that are controlled controlling military actions against the South, and right. the South Koreans will probably lean on us to do that for them. But Gordon, what I don't understand, though, is, I mean, who knows, this is the gamesmanship of war, right? right. There's a provocation, the United States responds, North Korea wants to prove it's tough. Why in that situation wouldn't they use a short-range nuclear missile on South Korea? Well, because they know that we, we would know because we can trace it, and so therefore we but can But they retaliate. believe that the United States would, right. would respond. They may, you know... <laughs> They may think that they can get away with it because if they think the United mm -hmm. States won't respond, this was the whole issue during the Cold War in Western Europe, whether the U.S. would use nukes to protect countries that were not the United That's States. The and right. so, and, and obviously China thinks that it can push us around because we reneged on our treaty obligations to the Philippines last year and we allowed the Chinese to take Scarborough Shoal. Then the Chinese ramp up the pressure on the Japanese and then you can see right. the North Koreans ramp up the pressure on South Korea. That's and, how this can get out of control. And of course China has been supporting North Korea and providing, and, and providing them a lot of help. Uh, there was a third anti-American propaganda video that came out of the North Korean government today. Threatens an attack on American forces using quote powerful weapons of mass destruction depicts an invasion of Seoul in which 150,000 Americans are killed. Now, there aren't that many Americans in Seoul, but obviously this right. video is designed to motivate uh, the North Korean people, and this comes on top of the other recent videos, right? The one where the White House was in the crosshairs, the Capitol blew up, and uh, New York City went up in flames. Uh, okay, these videos are the stuff of imagination, it, it, but is, are they serious? Well, they're serious and they're trying to intimidate us. And, mm -hmm. and that really is something that's important because the South Koreans don't think that we're going to defend them. There was that survey which said that the United States wasn't going to use nukes to help South Korea. And the South Koreans wanted their own nuclear arsenal. And that's a stunning mm -hmm. vote of no confidence in the U.S. And if the South Koreans don't trust us, probably the, the Chinese and the North Koreans also think that they can push us around. And that's when it gets really dangerous because mm -hmm. then someone tries to start something really very, very... Uh, provocative. Of course, makes you think about what all this means for Iran, too. Well, thanks so much to both of you. And still to come.